Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a 404 page template with Divi's Theme Builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is to start off by logging into your WordPress admin dashboard. Now, this is where I am right now. Next, you want to come over here to Divi and click on Theme Builder. So in your case, you may have some uh, settings that you may have here, but it doesn't matter. You can just go ahead and create a custom 404 page. And to do that, you want to come over here to add new template. Click on the plus button, scroll all the way down here to the bottom and select 404 page and then create template. Now, the first thing you want to do here is to make sure we disable the header and the footer. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. And also click on this eye icon to make sure that nothing shows in that area. Next, we want to build a custom body. So I'm going to click here on custom body, build custom body. We're going to build from scratch. And for now, we're just going to close this. So here we have a brand new section. So what you want to do is to start off by going into our section settings and add a background color. So I'm going to click here on background and our background color here is going to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Next, you want to come over here to design dividers. So this is where we want to add our bottom divider. So make sure bottom is selected. And on this drop down, this is where we're going to choose our style. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down here. And the style I'm going to go with is, is this one. And I'm, making, I'm going to also make sure that I flip vertical here. So now it's facing the, uh, the opposite direction. Next, I'm going to come over here to add my color. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and paste my hexadecimal value for my color. Now, if you want to use the exact same color as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so the next thing we're going to do now is to add our divider height. So I'm just going to come over here. By default, it's set to 100 pixels. Now, we want this to be 25VW. And then over here uh, on divider arrangement, we want to make sure that is um, underneath section content. Now, it's also good practice that when we design our, our 404 page, we want to make sure that it looks great on all devices. So let's go ahead and make sure we have the right sizes for the other screen sizes. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on tablet. And on the tablet here, we're just going to make this 77VW. And on the phone, we're going to make this 90VW. Now, the next stage is to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So we're going to start here with our top padding and we're going to set this to 4.6VW. And we're also going to add the same value on the bottom. So to quickly do that, you just need to click on this chain icon and it applies the value both to the top and the bottom. Now it's time to add our rows. So I'm going to save this and then I'm just going to hover over here and add my row. Now, as you can see, I can't really see my options to add my row. So what you want to do here is to click on this three little dots here on the bottom, expand settings, and then you want to click here on wireframe mode. Now you can see we have access to add our row. So I'm going to click on this plus button, add a single column. Now, before we do any changes here, we just want to make sure we add all our, all our settings to our row. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and I might as well flip over here to my desktop mode so I can see all the changes I'm making. So the next thing, the next thing we're going to do here is to adjust our gutter width. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing where it says use custom gutter width. We're going to uh, set this to yes and then we're going to set our gutter width to one now what the gutter width is is the space between the columns so we want to make sure that there's no spaces between the columns next we're going to come over here to our width and set this to a hundred percent and also on the maximum width we're going to do the same set this to a hundred percent now it's time to add our padding so i'm going to come over here to spacing and we are going to add two vw both to the top and the bottom and then save. Right now it's time to add our text module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my text module and select it. And in here, all we're going to add is just 404. And then we're going to customize it. So there we go. We have our text here uh, as 404. Now it's time to go to our text settings. So I'm going to come over here to design text. So the first thing we're going to do here is to add our font. So 
by default, it's set to default, of course, but uh, we want our font here to be called um, monotone. So I'm going to select it. For our text color, we're going to set this to black. So I'm going to click here, drag this all the way down here to black. And for our text size, we're going to set this to 24 VW. We're going to come over here to our line height, set this to 1 EM. And then we want to align this to the center. So I'm going to click here on our line center. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save this. And then we also need to add another text module. So I'm going to click on this plus button, search for my text module, select it. So this is where you want to add your text that describes what is happening on the page. For example, you can add text which says the page you're looking for is nowhere to be found. And then you can give further instructions. But in this case, I'm just going to add some dummy text. But of course, you can add whatever text you want. Now let's head over to the text settings. I'm going to click here on design text. And we're going to change our font here to monster rat. So I'm going to search for it. Select it. Our text color is going to be black. So I'm just going to come over here to my recent used colors. And here it is. I'm going to select black. And then next, we're going to set our size here to 1.2 VW. We also need to set our line height to 1 EM. And we also need to align our text so everything is nice and centered. So now that everything is centered, the next stage is to add our margin. So I'm going to come over the, all the way down here to spacing. And on the margin, we're going to set this to 2VW to the top. And to the bottom, we're going to set this to 6VW. And then save. Right, so moving on, the next stage now is to add two more columns. So what we're going to do, as you can see here, the button is right here on the bottom. So make sure you mouse over this area here. So I'm going to click on this plus button. And this time, we're going to add two columns. I'm going to go ahead and select them. We're going to go into the row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So straight away, you need to go to the design tab. And then over here, you want to make sure that we add our width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. And for our width, we're going to set this to 32VW. And then over here, we want to make sure we set this to 100%. Now, while we're here on the width, we can also adjust this for our mobile devices. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little icon on the tablet. We're going to set this to 50VW. And that's going to be the same as well for the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. Next, we're going to come over here to spacing because we need to add our margins. And we're going to add 7VW here to the top. And for the tablet, we might as well go in and add our sizes. So for the tablet here, we're going to set this to 22VW. And over here on the phone, we're going to set this to 59VW. And then for our top and bottom padding, we're going to set this to zero. Activate my chain. So now equal values are applied both to the top and the bottom. So now that we've added all our settings, the next stage is to just come back over here to the content tab. Now we need to go into each and, each and every one of these columns. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon to enter my first column. Click on background and we're going to start here by adding our background color, which is going to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. We're also going to add the hover color. So I'm going to click on this arrow pointing up, click on the hover tab. And then I'm just going to add my color in here. Just paste my values. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So the next thing we need to do now is to add our borders. So I'm going to come over here to design. Click on border, and we are going to give this some rounded corners of 20 pixels. Now, notice that this chain is activated, so this applies 20 pixels all around to give this rounded corners. Next, we're going to add uh, some drop shadows. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow, click on this option here, and for our blur strength, I'm just going to come over here, set this to about 50 pixels. And then over here on the shadow color, I'm just going to click here on the eyedropper tool and then just change this value here to zero. And we're also going to add a hover effect here. So I'm going to click on this arrow pointing up, click on the hover tab. And then we're also going to add a color here. Now, as I mentioned before, the color is going to be in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now let's head over to the animation tab. So I'm going to come over here to transform. So the option I'm going to go with here is transform scale. So I'm going to click here on the first tab, which is the transform scale. So you want to make sure that this is set to 100%. 
uh, on the right and 100% on the bottom. Now let's add our hover state. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow pointing up. So instead of having this at 100, I'm gonna set this to 110 and 110 to the bottom as well. But notice that this was applied automatically because my chain here is activated. So you can see here that our values are different depending on the hover state. Now let's add a text module to column one. So I'm gonna save this, save this one more time. So as you can see here, I don't have the ability to add my modules. So again, I'm gonna come over here to wireframe view, click on this plus button and search for my text module. I'm gonna select it. And then I can just switch back over here to my desktop view. So here I can add my text. So I'm just gonna call this home. Now it's very important that you link this text to wherever you want it to go to. So over here, we have the ability to add our link. So in this case, I'm just gonna add a blank link. But in your case, you wanna make sure that this links to the homepage or wherever you want the button to link to. Now let's customize this text. So I'm gonna come over here to design text, change this and set this to monster ad. Our font weight is gonna be bold, uppercase. And our text color here is gonna be black. So I'm gonna click here on recent and choose my black color. And the next stage is to add our text size, which is going to be 0.8 VW. And over here, we're gonna add a letter spacing of one pixel. Line height, we're gonna set this to 1.8. And of course, we're gonna center this. So I'm gonna come over here and make sure it's centered. Now let's give this text some breathing space by adding some padding. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And in fact, we need spacing here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a padding of two VW, both to the top and the bottom. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm just gonna save here. Now to save us time, I'm just gonna duplicate this and just drag it over here to the other column here on the right. So notice that it doesn't have the uh, white background. All we have to do now is to just copy all our styles and just paste them over here. So I'm just gonna go into my settings here, right click, copy item styles, and then I'm just gonna paste item styles here. And now you can see that it's been added over here to the right. So this is one of those quick tips that will uh, help you work faster in Divi. So now that we have our text here, we need to uh, make sure that we change this text and maybe we can call this support. And of course you wanna make sure that we link this button to wherever the support page is. Now that we've finished designing this, we just need to save this and then we can exit out of this. So this is our 404 page. But of course, uh, we wanna test this and see if this is really working. So I'm gonna save the changes here. It's very important that you save here. And now we're just gonna open up a page that does not exist on our website. So I'm just gonna open a new tab here and just type in you know, some gibberish here. And of course, I know that page doesn't exist. So let's see what happens when I go to that page. And there we go, the page is now showing. And of course, uh, if people click here, they'll t this will take them to the homepage and this will take them to the support. But of course, you can link, you can add uh, whatever buttons that you want here on these two buttons. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.